the car. Not only is it my pride and joy, but it's a perfect way of getting out and about and experiencing the thrill of the open road. But remember, long car journeys can be difficult, so it's best to be prepared. Are you ready, Zond? Certainly am. I've got some excellent reading material. Got a little something to eat in case I get hungry. And I've got some water. Fair enough, son. But the car can also be a place of danger. You could choke on those sweets. Never. Well, you could read your comic book and make yourself sick. No, I don't think so. Well, you could drink too much water and need a pee. Oh, I'm OK. All right. Let's get your seatbelt on and close the door. Actually, I do need a wee. Ah! Ah! My finger! Uh-oh, looks like an injury alert. So what should you do with a suspected broken finger? A. Take a selfie of it and send it to your friends. B. Elevate the finger and support it. Or C. Stick it in a glass full of lemonade and let the bubbles soothe it. Alia, what would you do? Um, B. I would put my fingers up in the air. In fact, Alia is absolutely right. The correct answer is B. Check this out. So what are you going to do now with your broken thumb? Oh, uh, right, get it up next to that one and put it there. Put it there. Or, if you wanted to reduce the swelling, you can put it anywhere above your heart. You put your hand up in the air, you might get tired. It still hurts. When you break bones, they bleed. You get swelling under the skin, and that's partly what hurts. If you put the hand up, less blood can get to it. And all you have to do is put your hand above your heart. OK, your heart's where all the blood comes from. So if you, even if you just put it up there, that'll help. So, who wants to have a go? Now, remember, we're showing you what to do in an emergency, but it's always best to find an adult. Ah! You've just broken my finger. So what are you going to do now? Put your hand above your heart. Ow! Ow! So what have you done there? I've put my hand here yeah. so that the blood um, goes drains down. What we could do is we could use her own hood. Jasmine, do you want to see if you can put your hand in the hoodie in a way that you can then just chill out. How does that work? Does that feel better? <laughs> so, if you think you might have broken your finger, elevate it to stop it throbbing, support it, and tell an adult. Right, Nazan, are you sure you don't need a wee? Nope, I've got it all sorted. Your body is amazing, but sometimes it needs fixing. All over the UK, there are special teams of professionals trained to tackle medical mysteries, and sometimes their work is life-changing. Whatever you're doing, wherever you are, you never stop breathing. Whether you're playing football, out for a relaxing country walk, or having a nice little nap. In fact, you breathe 20,000 times a day. And you don't even have to think about it. Your body does it automatically. But from time to time, people can have problems with their breathing. And this can be due to a condition called asthma. Asthma is a very common lung condition. You might even have it yourself. Every time you breathe, air travels down your windpipe and into your bronchi, the tubes that carry the air in and out of your lungs. But if someone has asthma, their bronchi can swell and become narrow, which causes wheezing and can lead to an asthma attack. Over a million kids in the UK have asthma. You probably know someone with it yourself. And today, I'm going to the asthma clinic at the Evelina London Children's Hospital to find out more. And this is how I get to the clinic. Ah! In for a regular checkup is 10-year-old James. To weigh you and mm -hmm. see how tall you are. A year ago, his asthma was so bad he was hospitalised and ended up in intensive care. But now the condition is being managed at the asthma clinic. You show me how you do it at home, okay? Okay. Nurse Carol wants to make sure James is using his inhaler properly. It delivers medicine straight to the lungs where it's needed. Wonderful. And James has two inhalers. A purple one, which reduces swelling in the airways to prevent an asthma attack. 
and a blue one, which calms any swelling and allows air through even if an attack is already happening. Ready for James is Dr. Jane Herity. She wants to find out if his medication is doing its job. And does your asthma stop you doing anything that you, that all your friends can do? No. You can run around and you're as yeah. fast as they are at running around. Mm. Good. That's what we're aiming for. To get a proper look at how James' lungs are working, Dr Jane uses this special machine called a spirometer. So what does this machine do? So it's measuring how big a breath he's taking in and how quickly he can blow that air out and it shows as if his airways are narrowed. There we go. Let's see if this little boy can blow his petals off the flower for me. So big breath in and blow out as hard and as fast as you can. Go, 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 go. Excellent look. Nice big rainbow. Well yeah. done. And how do James's results look? They're excellent, and it shows his, his lungs are good and he's taking his inhalers, which is what we want. It's a great result for James, and there's even better news to come. Your lung function tests are good and you're not getting any asthma symptoms, so I think we can actually reduce down your inhalers a little bit. So we're going to get you to take one puff in the morning and one puff in the evening, so halving mm. your medicines, but still taking them regularly. So is that good news? Yeah, that's good news. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Some people grow out of asthma, while others have it forever. But with treatments now available, it doesn't have to impact your life. Asthma is actually the most common long-term health problem that people in the UK have. But as we've seen today, it can actually be really well managed with regular checkups and the right medication. In A&E, our next patient has had an unusual accident. Luckily, he's in the right place to get sorted. Fee you! Let's see who's in Liverpool's accident and emergency waiting room. My name is Ben. This is Ruby. This is Scarlett. Nice to meet you. What's up? When I was climbing up the stairs with my socks off. Yes. It's the only way that I could get up there quicker. Right. I fell on the strong part of the slide and I broke my arm. That will do. It certainly will. Let's piece that together, shall we? Ben was having a good time playing in the fun park with his two sisters. He was running and climbing all over the place. Looks fun. But his socks were making him slip, so he took them off. Ew, could be smelly. No, Zahn, that's your feet. Anyway, sockless Ben climbed even higher. But on the way up, he slipped and slammed his arm. Ouch! After a quick trip to X-ray, the next stop is minor injuries. Where nurse practitioner Sarah Jackson is waiting. Have a little look at your hand, then. Be careful, though. I will be very careful. Nurse Sarah carefully checks that Ben's arm is working properly. Can you wiggle your fingers for me? And have you had a picture? Yeah, two oh, pictures. Two pictures. Should we go and have a little look and see what you've done? Yeah. Then she checks his x-rays. Looking at the x-ray, I saw two small buccal fractures. That's those bulges there. What we're going to do is we're going to pop him in a splint. He needs to keep the splint on for three weeks, OK? And What's a splint? It's like a magic plaster. Magic? This goes on your hands, OK? Now Ben gets his splint on, this supports his arm and keeps it straight while his bones heal. And when I have to go to school like this? Yeah, you have to school like that. With that answered, he's off. Have you learned anything today, Ben? I'm going to be more careful with my arm. Glad to hear it. Be quiet, girls. Well sorted, Ben. Bye, Bye girls. Bye, Bye ben. ben. Bye, Let's go back to accident and emergency to see what happened to our next patient. You are not going to believe this one. Why not? Did you make it up? What? No, it's just a figure of speech. It's an expression. OK. This is five-year-old Tiana with her mum and a poorly foot. And check out this handsome doctor. Hmm. Now, which foot did you hurt? Was it this one? No, this one. Oh, silly old Dr Chris, eh? So how did you hurt it? When my mum was riding the bike and my foot got caught in the wheel. Wow, that does sound very careless of your mum. Naughty mum. Let's look at this in detail. It was a gorgeous sunny day, so Tiana and her mum were out for a bike ride. Well, sounds lovely. Tiana had the best view from the back seat, whilst Mum was doing all the pedalling at the front. 
even better. But it all went wrong as they got to a roundabout. Oh, no. Did she do the same as you the other week? Um, you know, when the pigeon pooped on your head and you got in such a flap you ended up face first in a fountain? No, Zond. And you promised never to tell anyone. Oops. Anyway, Tiana's foot fell down off the seat and it got caught in the spokes of the wheel. Ouch! OK, Mum's off the hook, but that bike has a lot to answer for. First up, Tiana heads to X-Ray to be checked for broken bones. Finished. Wow, that was speedy. While Tiana has a quick pit stop, here comes Dr. Rob Maguire to assess the damage. All the bones seem clear. There was nothing, you know, obvious to see on the X-ray. Excellent. The bones are intact, but it's still hurting, isn't it, Tiana? My foot is really sore. So it might take, you know, a week or so for her to get back to normality. The wound gets a good clean and a plaster. But amazingly, the best treatment here is to let your body fix itself. <laughs> Your skin has a whole battle plan worked out. Sticky blood cells called platelets rush to the wound and clump together to stop the bleeding. Then a protein called fibrin holds everything together with fibres like scaffolding and it goes hard to form a scab. Underneath, new skin cells are made, pushing off the scab and you're as good as new. So, what have we learned here, Chris? Be careful next time you're on the bike, Mum. I will. <laughs> Can you give me five? Bye, Bye Tiana! Tiana.